Um, it's, it's kind of amazing to me how the Lord brings things uh, to me to share with you. Uh, probably about th three weeks ago, I guess, maybe I happened. This little Bible I keep on my desk right on the corner just for convenience sake if I want to pick up find something in Scripture or, or to read it. And I happened to uh, pick this up one day and I was leafing through it to find something else. And I came across some verses that I had highlighted and I have no idea when I had done that. I, you know, I, and it's in Job chapter 19 verses 25 and 26. It says, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand in the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. And I got to just reading that over and over and meditating on that and, and just thinking about all that was in those two verses right there. And the fact that Job, hundreds of years before Jesus was ever born and walked on this earth, was telling us that he is going to come back and, and be on this earth and that we are, he is going to see them in his flesh. He's going to see Jesus. And I just, you know, I got to thinking more and more about that, thinking about that. And it reminded me of a message that I heard probably seven or eight years ago. Um, some of you may know uh, Pastor Robert Morris, who's the pastor of Gateway Church, uh, Church in Dallas, Texas. And you, you heard him on radio and seen him on TV. Well, he preached a series on the end, what's next. Um, and in that series, there was a particular sermon called A Glorious Day. <laughs> and I think about that whenever we sing that song. But that, in that message, he gave 21 irrefutable facts about the second coming of Jesus Christ. I'm going to share all of them with you. <laughs> particularly the last one is one that I just really didn't know or think about. But And some of these are kind of really grouped together. Um, and, but I, I really want to share them with you and some of my thoughts because I have... I have heard that message over a couple of times, once on radio, and I know on television I've heard it probably at least twice. And, and I've, I've sat down and read uh, these 21 in these facts that he gave during this message. And so I want to share with th that with you today. Number one, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. His number one thing he said was that Jesus himself will come again. That's that's a fact. That's, it comes from the Bible. We know it's to be true. There's no way to refute that. 
scripture tells us that. And number two, Jesus himself will receive us. John 14 and 3 says, If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. And where I am there, you may be also. Isn't that wonderful? Can you rejoice with me this day to know that there is a place in the presence of God that is prepared for us by Jesus Christ. That's irrefutable. The scripture says it. It is true. And he's coming again to receive who? You and me. Isn't that right? What else? If, if you go on and read that scripture, he, Jesus says, if it were not so, I would tell you. But what I'm telling you is the truth. Amen? Amen. Number three, we will meet him in the air. 2 Thessalonians 4 and 17 says, Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with him. You're not going to get there on a Delta <laughs> or American Airlines. We're going to meet him in the air because that's the way he's going to do it. And that is a fact. It's going to happen. I know in times past I've shared with you a dream I had a number of years ago. But it was so real to me that I was walking along and I noticed something about the ground wasn't right. And I looked down and I wasn't touching the ground. I was walking and I kept walking. And I thought, what's going on? And then it dawned on me, this is it. This is it. And I'm, the earth is moving away. And I thought, I'm getting ready to see Jesus. And I looked up in this bright light, a tremendous bright light, and I was moving into it. And I, my heart was pounding, and I was thinking, I'm going to see him any minute now. It's, going to re it's really going to happen. And then, of course, I woke up. Boy, you talk about some disappointment. You know, I could I feel my heart was still beating, but I was going into that light, and I just knew any second. And I don't know why I had that dream, but it was real. But it's going to happen one day. It is going to happen. Number four, he will minister to those who are found watching. Luke 12, 20, or Luke, uh, 12 20, uh, 37. Blessed are those slaves whom the master will find in the alert when he comes. Truly I say to you that he will gird himself to serve and have them recline at the table and will come up and wait on them. Wow. You know, Jesus doesn't need to wait on me. But what an example of a servant he's been. I don't deserve it, but the scripture says that he's going to minister to those who are found watchful. Number five, he will return to the earth. Acts 1.11 they also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus who you have seen taken up into heaven will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. He's going to come back the same way. Those fellows that were standing there on that mountainside and watched him go up got a preview of what we're going to see when he comes back in the cloud. Number six, he will return to the Mount of Olives. 
in Zechariah uh, 14 and 4. In that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which is in the front of Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives will be split in the middle from the east to the west by a very large valley. So the half of the mountain will move towards the north and the other half to the south. He's going to touch down on this earth. There is a place near Jerusalem where his feet are going to touch. That is an irrefutable fact because the scripture tells us. Number seven, he will return in flaming fire. Second Thessalonians 1, 7 and 8. And to give relief to you who are afflicted and to us as well when the Lord Jesus will be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, dealing out retribution to those who do not know God and to those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming back. But it's not going to be just simply walking up. He's coming back in a shout and in power and glory and in a flaming fire. Number eight, he will come with power and glory, Matthew 24, 30. And when the signs of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. You know, it's not... Everybody's going to know it. There's no way to avoid it. Everybody's going to know it. And with such power and glory. Number nine, and he will stand on the earth. This is what I read from Job in uh, uh, 19 and 25. As for me, I know my Redeemer liveth, and on the last day he will take his stand on the earth. He will actually come and stand here again. The Word says it, and we believe it, and we know it. Number 10, He will destroy the Antichrist in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8. Then the lawless one, which is the Antichrist, will be revealed, whom the Lord will slay with the breath of his mouth and bring to an end by the appearance of his coming. Wow, what power. God spoke this word into world into existence, and Jesus is going to defeat the Antichrist with his mouth. Number 11, he will sit on the throne of his glory, Matthew 25 and th uh, 31. But when the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. Where does Jesus need to be? Where does He deserve to be than on the throne of David? No other place. And He deserves there and He deserves the recognition from all nations and he's going to have dominion and reign from there. Number 12 he will be given the throne of David in Luke 1 and 32 he will be great and will be called the son of, of the most high and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David Number 13, he will be given the nations, Psalms 2 and 8. Ask of me, and I will surely give the nations as your inheritance, and the very ends of the earth as your possessions. God's going to give this over to Jesus. He's going to uh, be given the nations. Number 14, he will gather all nations and judge them. Matthew 25 and 32. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them from one another, as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. There is a judgment. There is a judgment. Many people 
don't believe, a lot of people are not even aware, but there is coming a judgment. And Jesus is the one that is going to be judged. Number 15, he will reign on the earth. Jeremiah 23 and 5. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, which is Jesus, and he will reign as king and act wisely and do justice and righteousness in the land. Number 16. He will be given the kingdoms of the world, Revelation 11 and 15. When the seventh angel sounded and they were uh, loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever and ever and ever. It will not stop. It will not stop. Number 17, he will be given dominion, Daniel 7 and 14. And to him was given dominion, glory, and a kingdom that all the people's nations and men and every language might serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which will not pass away and his kingdom is one which will not be destroyed. Folks, there's coming a time when everybody will know who he is. No thing on this earth can destroy or take away what we just read. That's right. There's nothing, there's no power that can take that away. 18, all who are in the graves will hear his voice. John 5 and 28. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming in which all who are in the tombs will hear his voice. Friday, my wife and I went to a funeral. A cousin of hers passed away after a long sickness. And he's, Tony was probably just two years older than me. And I had gotten to know him well. And we were standing outside at the graveside, and, and I was just thinking about this particular scripture because I was looking at a casket, and the minister who was presiding said, We're just putting a body in the grave today. Uh, Tony's in heaven with the Lord. He said, we're going to put it in the grave today, but it's coming out. Amen. And the scripture tells us Amen. that those that are in the tombs will hear his voice. And what are they going to do? They are going to come out. Number 19, every eye will see him, Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn over him, so it is to be. Every eye will see him. It doesn't matter whether it's day or night. Your eyes are going to be open to witness what's happening. Number 20, every knee will bow. <clears throat> Isaiah 45, uh, 22 and 23. Turn to me and be saved all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. I, will, I have sworn by myself, the word has gone forth from my mouth in righteousness and will not turn back, that to me every knee will bow, every tongue will swear allegiance. And in Philippians 2, 
9 and, uh, through 11. For this reason also God highly exalted him, meaning Jesus, and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee will bow, and those who are in heaven and on earth, under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God and the Father. Let me tell you, this is the time where the atheist will no longer be. They will find out. This is the time the agnostic will no longer be. Those that declare there's got to be a higher power are going to find out what his name is. And his name is Jesus. And he is going to be seen, be heard, and come with power, and every knee is going to bow before him on that day. What a glorious day. And it is the truth, folks. It is the truth. The scripture tells us that, and it's going to happen. And what a wonderful and glorious day. And number 21, I had never thought about this until I heard this sermon the very first time. Second Peter, verse Second Peter, chapter th three, verse twelve. Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning, and the elements will melt with intense heat. And in Matthew twenty four. Verse 13 and 14. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. Then the end will come. His number 21 says... We can hasten, speed up the coming of the Lord by telling others who Jesus Christ is. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? How important is it for each and every one of us to be willing to hold up Jesus Christ before everyone? It doesn't matter where you work, what you do during the week, or who you come in contact. We have that responsibility as Christians to bring the name of Jesus Christ before people. And in so doing, we'll hasten the end to come. And I, that just really kind of blew my mind. For, I've read the scripture, and it didn't really mean anything to me. But when he preached this summer, this that sermon, it really just kind of came home to me at that time. The, the Holy Spirit just really kind of opened it up to me. How important it is for you and I to lift up the name of Jesus wherever we're at. You know, and it doesn't mean that you got to stand on the street corner with a Bible and beat people over the head with it. It means wherever you're at, you acknowledge, you give thanks to the Lord. We're to give thanks in all things, aren't we? Is that what the scripture says? We're to acknowledge Him, you know, in all things. And so we do that. And the Lord, it's amazing to me. Just simply saying, well, praise the Lord, or I thank the Lord, acknowledging before people how it will open a door. I've had this happen with students more than once. 
that in, in just my conversation in the lab or talking with them and things like that, that I acknowledge Jesus Christ in my life and that whatever is happening or going on, you know. And when they hear that name of Jesus being proclaimed, lifted up, and given thanks for, somebody's going to come to me at some point and say, you're a Christian, aren't you? Of course, the answer is yes. I've always wondered about, can you tell me, I've always heard, and boy, the opportunity is there to share Jesus Christ. You don't have to go to Bible school. You just got to have a Bible. You don't have to be a preacher. You just got to be able to read. Or in today's day, just listen. You can play it on a, your phone. You can get a CD, listen to it on the Internet day and night, and listen to God's Word and let it fill you up. But don't leave it in here. Give it away. Amen. Give it away. And I think that's one of the things that I took away when I heard this message the first time. How important it is for us to share Jesus Christ. And I... Over the years, people will say to me, well, I'm just, you know, I have a hard time. I just don't know what to say. It's got to be a part of your everyday conversation and who you are. It's got to just come out. It's just got to come out. Thank you, Jesus. How many, has anybody got that sticker on your car or in your lawn? Thank you, Jesus. Uh, how many times have you said thank you, Jesus, in the presence of others? That's all it takes. I guarantee you, folks. If during this week and you're out, if you acknowledge people before people who Jesus Christ is, somewhere, someone is going to come to you and say, well, I perceive that you're a Christian. Will you pray for my so-and-so? They're sick. You know, it... And I probably shouldn't laugh. You know, it's, it amazes me the number of people who will come and ask me to pray for. And they don't realize they can pray themselves. And I try to lead them in praying for. They said they have a loved one who's sick or on drugs or... They know, they know they need salvation. Would you pray for them? Yes, I will pray for them. And, there, and there's been many a times in, in the clinic that somebody would come to me and say, George, would you pray for my daughter because she's really sick? I said, you really want to pray for him? She said, yes. I said, okay, let's step right in this room right here. And I said, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. He says, I don't have any special connection. You and I can talk to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is sitting at the right hand of the Father right now, waiting and interceding for us, moving in our life. How wonderful is that? He's coming. He's coming with a shout. He's coming in fire and glory and power. We need to tell folks. We need to tell folks and let them know that. How wonderful that is. He's going to touch down. We're going to go up. <laughs> I kind of
kind of sometimes I wonder that dream if I'm gonna think about that when it actually happens I don't know I'll be so excited I probably won't <laughs> it'll be an afterthought when I get to heaven <laughs> but I am excited about that Heavenly Father we thank you we thank you for these 21 irrefutable facts about Jesus second coming. And I thank you for giving Pastor Robert uh, this uh, that message it has meant so much to me and I wanted to share this with those here today. You've given me that opportunity and I believe Heavenly Father that it will speak to them, encourage them and that in the coming days as the end is coming closer we will proclaim you before the nations and hasten that day that you will come. Father, I pray and give you thanks in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen.